G'day, this is Russell Cameron from Dagu. I want to demonstrate our new uh, CNC controller. You can see the CNC controller here. Uh, we've got a nice little display there with your emergency stop at the top and some buttons. Uh, this is mounted on a uh, stand. You can raise the height, change the angle, etc. And it's hooked up to just a cheap CNC machine we bought off the internet at the moment for testing with. And I'm using MeshCam software to generate patterns for it, to generate the G-code. Uh, you can see here, I've used the SparkFun logo because it's simpler than the Dagu logo, just quicker and easier to use. Um, I've already loaded that uh, toolpath, you can see the toolpath there. I've loaded that into the SD card on the controller here, I hope I have, and we're just going to machine it. So excuse me while I get this set up right, we're just going to press select because it's already on file, we'll select the spark fun quick, uh, you can see there the G code, we can scroll through the G-code and read it if we want, uh, just to check that it's the job we wanted. Once we're happy, oh, hang on, I'm trying to get rid of the reflection on the screen there. Once we've, oh, there's no reflection. Once we've um, selected the G-code we want, um, we go to scan it. Now, when we scan it. The first thing the control is going to ask you to do is to uh, check the size of the tool. This is so that the controller knows uh, what the total height of the machine is and can tell if the job will fit in the machine or not. So we'll just go scan and you can see here the control is programmed to bring the tool up to the end of the bed away from the job and it's going to measure the height of it. It does this by driving the tool down at 20% uh, power for greater than distance it should travel, then counts the number of steps back up. By counting the number of steps back up, it now knows precisely the height um, allowing for the length of the tool. Because different tools, uh, cutting tools, will have different lengths. So that's uh, compensated for that now. And when we go back to here, um, you can see there, oh sorry, you can see there it's scanned the, it's ready to scan the job, oh it has scanned the job, sorry. You've got the number of lines, um, the name of the file, the width, uh, the cut, this is the cutting width, so it's not the stock width, but the width, um, height, etc. is all uh, the cut, uh, of the cutting. There's no offsets there, which is good. That means there's no negative numbers. Uh, now it does like a preview there. So you can check that your job's okay. If you wanted to, you could actually mirror the job here. Um, I won't at the moment because it'll take too long. Um, but you can mirror it on the X or Y axis. We can see that the writing is already the correct way around, so there's no need to mirror it. I press uh, select again and now we're ready to run. You can see there start a new job from the beginning. You also have you can also select um, an unfinished job. If you had a job that was uh, interrupted unexpectedly you can resume from the start um, from where it finished um, and you can also check the center of the material. Uh, that's only useful if your job is um, symmetrical. So anyway, we'll go to start of the beginning, uh, start of the new job. The machine's now going to home position. It always assumes you've installed the correct tool for the first run. If your toolpath has uh, multiple tool changes, then it will um, instruct you to change tools partway through the job.